Hi, welcome to this short video in which we will cover one of the most anticipated application of graphene which is its use for purifying water and we'll also share how long before the product based on this technology gets commercialized. On this channel Synergy Files we aim to inspire engineers and technicians for a better more sustainable world. You might have luckily stumbled across this video so before you do anything else subscribe to the channel and we'll keep you posted with information packed videos on renewable energy sustainability and much much more. Portable water scarcity is growing at an alarming rate. Even at present more than 1.2 billion people lack access to clean drinking water. In 2015 water scarcity was listed by the World Economic Forum as the largest global risk in terms of potential impact over the next decade. Of all the water that is available to us, 97% is saline. Therefore, low cost and low environmental impact desalination technique holds the key for resolving this issue. Over the last two decades, there have been huge development in seawater desalination and in particular reverse osmosis technology. However, there are several disadvantages of using reverse osmosis for getting drinkable water. First is the setup cost of the plant which can be an impractical possibility for a lot of developing nations. Second is the membrane that needs to be treated with care. And last but not the least, the yield amount is very low in smaller systems and the amount of wastewater is very high. A typical system will only be able to reuse about 5-15% to 15 of the water that is going to be pumped in, thus leaving up to 85% wastewater. In light of this looming crisis, the promise of graphene desalination is very reassuring. A sieve made out of graphene has been successfully tested for filtering out salts while allowing water through. Tests so far have shown that water's own gravitational potential energy is enough to achieve the filtration process at a small rate. It is interesting to note that the maximum distance between carbon atoms at the two opposite ends of a single hexagon in graphene mesh is about 0.284 nanometers, whereas the size of a water molecule is about 0.275 nanometers. So the gap is just wide enough to send the water molecules through. For reference, the size of sodium chloride molecule is about 0.564 nanometers. That means it's twice as big as the gap and hence it is filtered out. Despite the seemingly straightforward application of using graphene as a filter, scientists initially struggled to use it as such. The reason for that is graphene weakened and expanded when immersed in water. This allowed more than just water molecules to pass through the graphene mesh. But now Manchester based graphene research group developed these graphene membranes with chemical coating to avoid the swelling of the membrane when exposed to water. The pore size in the membrane can be precisely controlled which can sift common salts out of salty water and make it safe to drink. A leading researcher on graphene, Professor Rahul Nair, hopes that full-size desalination plants with graphene membranes will be possible within five years. In the UK, the National Graphene Institute in Manchester is teaming up with a company called Icon Lifesaver to produce graphene-based filtration systems. Icon Lifesaver has been developing water filtration products for over a decade. At present, many of their products are able to filter out all microbiological contamination. With the aid of graphene membrane, they would be able to filter out dissolved salts and metals as well. Separately in Australia, research organization CSIRO was able to replicate the results again using graphene filters. They collected heavily contaminated water of Sydney Harbour and made it drinkable in just a one-step process, that is passing the water through graphene membrane which they have termed graphair. In a recent study, a graphair coated membrane, roughly one square inch, could produce half a liter of water a day. The researchers are working on scaling up the membrane to the size of an A5 sheet of paper. A larger size would be able to produce 50 to 100 liters of water a day or possibly more. According to Adrian Murdoch of CSIRO, having Two or three layers of larger membranes in series should be able to produce enough water for a household. A word of caution here though, 
Healthy drinking water should have around 300 ppm of dissolved salts. Consumption of very pure water can upset the fluid electrolyte balance in the body, so it's a good idea to remineralize the water before consumption. So we hope you would have learned something from this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Share it with your friends to spread awareness. Thank you for your attention.